Capcom has this threat about localization, and people are not happy about it. Yes, I know that localization isn't just about translating words. I am bilingual. I get when things are lost in translation. So let me highlight the parts that make people not particularly happy. A good localization makes players feel right at home. Why would we want to feel right at home? Your games brought us into all sorts of crazy and wacky worlds. That's fun. Our home is not. The aim is to create an immersive experience where players from different backgrounds can identify with the characters and narrative. Are you implying that we haven't already? If players from different backgrounds cannot relate to your characters, that's terrible writing on your part, Capcom. There are many things that I want from Capcom. I want them to translate and localize games as faithfully as they can, but in other more serious concerns, fix the PC port of Dragon's Dogma 2, release a teaser or anything about Remake 5 so we can see how much you screwed it up. Yeah, Capcom has been nothing but crap as of late. Actually, a lot of Japanese game companies are starting to become like that when they decided to pull off all sorts of dumb moves for their recent games. And you wonder why people are going retro. Another example? Bandai Namco. Okay, Bandai Namco, you are officially on the trash list, just like your new logo. Bandai Namco decided to strike down Tekken mods and their tweets. One of the mods is Reina in her devil form, I guess because it's a spoiler mod, but she's a Mishima. Of course she has a devil form, all Mishimas have that. Even Heihachi has one, except instead of having a devil form, he himself is already a devil. Bandai Namco decided to take the devil form with the battle pass for Tekken 8 and striking fan content, taking cues from Nintendo, I see. But don't worry, Tekken fans, you're not the only one that got screwed. Be wary, Souls fans, they're striking your content too. Do you like the Tales series and its rich legacy of games? Don't worry, you can only buy these games. Oh, and add Jujutsu Kaisen fans to the mix too. It's an actual contender for the worst game of 2024. It's literally this meme for Bandai Namco. Big shame. Don't worry guys, we got plenty more gaming hooplas for this video. But before we get to more of them, this video is brought to you by all these wonderful sponsors. You're all fantastic. If you want to see your names among these legends, then check out the links down below. Just one dollar. And you have supported this channel immensely. Seriously, thank you so much. And now, let's talk about the wrong way to support game developers. Mike Ibarra, former Blizzard and current Microsoft, had this hot take. After beating a game that costs about 70 bucks, he wants to give the developers even more more money. I wish I could give these folks another $10 or $20 because it was worth more than my initial $70 and they didn't try to nickel and dime me every second. And that's precisely how they're nickel and diming you. Guys, if you buy a game, the money goes to the company. And the company doesn't care about their employees. They're laying them off every year while the suits at the top reap all the cash you gave them. If you want to support the developers, donate directly to them. And if you don't have money, just email them a thank you. Also, take off Horizon and God of War. They don't belong in the same conversation as Red Dead Redemption 2, Baldur's Gate 3, and Elden Ring. It'd be nice if you gave me games that are actually worth 70 bucks which is non-existent at the time of writing. It's hard for most gamers to justify the $70 price tag, let alone a cut down $70. Oh, but don't worry guys, it gets worse. Much worse. Ubisoft's latest offering, Star Wars Outlaws, had people complaining about the woman looking ugly. I don't think she looks that bad, but I don't understand why you have to justify it by saying how hard it is to make attractive people. Meanwhile, Japan, Korea, China. Then again, it's nothing that mods can't fix, so I can't complain too much, especially when there are bigger issues at hand, like Ubisoft charging people a hundred plus dollars for the game. So you have the base game for $70 because all AAA games should be $70 in current year. Then you have the gold edition, which includes the base game and a season pass. You can also play the game three days early. That's what the three days early access means. Then you have the Ultimate Edition, which lets you have all sorts of content. whoop de doo It's the Mona Lisa meme all over again. For those of you that hate how video games cost more than $60 now, I can assure you that video games have costed more than $60 for a long time. And you wonder why people are going retro these days. You wonder why people decide to travel back to the past to play the not-so-crappy games that don't suck ass. Well, for one, games of the past that don't suck ass are way cheaper than games of today that sucks in so many ways. If you're gaming and you're not sailing the seas right now, you should. Apparently, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth didn't sell as well as the last game. Is anyone really surprised? Rebirth is a continuation of Remake's plot, so you have to play the remake to understand Rebirth. Not to mention, the game is a PS5 exclusive at this moment, which is baffling because Remake 7 eventually goes to PC a year later with even more content in the form of Integrate. So I don't know why people bother paying for the game now when they can wait for the PC version and get more content. You realize that the majority of them will pirate this game. 
No, console peasant, the majority of PC gamers do not pirate. You make piracy seems like an easy thing to do. I get DMs and emails on how to pirate stuff all the time. Piracy is not something that people can learn easily. I did make extensive guides on how I sail the seas, but right now just go to the R Piracy mega thread, they can help you on that. Or if you don't like Reddit, use any of the treasures at the bottom. They're also great. Oh, speaking of Final Fantasy, there's one funny post about Final Fantasy that I would like to share with you all, because it truly boggles the mind in why anyone would share this opinion. I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan, but I think this suggestion is a bit much. Is it time for Square Enix to abandon the Final Fantasy IP? No, and a lot of others seem to share the sentiment, but let's get into the reasoning. This take is based on the experience of the OP talking to people and not, you know, playing the games. So. What are the reasons? Mediocre reputation? What planet are you on? Too much effort to get into the series? All the games have standalone storylines. This is why you should not play Remake 7 and stick to the original. It's one self-contained masterpiece. The entry is not real Final Fantasy? That's just the fans' subjective point of view. Ignore them. But by far, the most baffling reason why Square Enix should abandon Final Fantasy is because the OP is not interested in JRPGs then why are you in a conversation about Final Fantasy, the most famous JRPG of all time? Go away. Well, that was stupid, but at least it's one person's stupidity and not, you know, an entire corporation. This hoopla requires some context. You know how there are lots of companies that make keyboards, right? Logitech, SteelSeries, Corsair, etc. Imagine if Logitech decides to make a license on specific model of keyboards, like the 60%. So anyone who wants to make 60% keyboards, they must go to Logitech first and get their license. This hoopla is like that, but instead of 60% keyboards, it's lever less fight sticks, as in fight sticks that use buttons for movement rather than a lever or a joystick. So it's like playing with a keyboard. Hitbox decided to make a license for leverless fighting game sticks. So if you're a company or an individual that makes leverless fighting game sticks, Hitbox are gonna knock on your door and be like, Oi mate, you got a license for that fighting stick? Do you find that extremely unfair? So do a lot of others. The ratio on this one is not exactly friendly to Hitbox. And that's all for the video today. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more. Don't forget to check out my ABB show channel, link down below, go subscribe. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.